Good evening, everyone, and I would like to welcome you all once again to another Wednesday night Bible study. I hope all of you guys had a very Merry Christmas, and I'm sure, like so many others, that you are ready to uh, begin a new year. And in beginning a new year, well, that can only mean one thing, and what's that? It's time for everyone to make those uh, New Year's resolutions. And before we get deep into the message, just what a lot of it's going to be about, a resolution, I want to make sure that we have an understanding of what a resolution means, the definition of resolution. And if you look at this, a resolution is a firm, and that's going to come into play a lot tonight, a firm decision to do something or not to do something. Resolution, a firm decision to do something or not to do something. Now, now, as Christians, I believe it's important for us to always be firm in, in our decisions. Now, you won't hear me do this a lot. Uh, I don't go to this uh, translation often, but every now and then I like the way it reads. So this is going to be out of the, the King James Version. And like I said, this is why as Christians, we should always be firm in our decisions. Matthew 5, 37, like I said, out of the King James Version, but let your communication, the things you speak, let your communication be, and here it is, this will come into play a lot tonight as well, yay, yay, nay, nay. Matthew 5, 37, but let your communications be yay, yay, or nay, nay. So it's saying let your yay be yay, and let your nay be nay. But basically, um, it's like, let your yes, the things you say yes, let that be yes. And the things you say no to, when you say no, let that be a no. So, so lots of people make resolutions, and uh, lots of times they'll look like this right here. Okay, we're, we're going to make a resolution that I've decided I'm going to, this year, I'm going to quit smoking. This year, I'm going to, to save money. You'll make a resolution that I'm going to start going to the gym. And if I'm going to the gym, well, then I, I might as well uh, eat healthy. But remember that resolution, that was a firm decision. And see, if you have been smoking for years, I believe 100% that you have to make a firm decision to stop smoking. See, if you're the type of person that, that you have your paycheck spent, before it ever gets to you, well, then you have to make a firm decision to save money. Let's say the only possibility you have to work out is like at uh, 6 o'clock in the morning, and you're not much of a, a morning person. Well, once again, then you will have to make a firm decision to go to the gym. If every night before you like to go to bed, you, you reach up in the cabinet and you grab that box of Little Debbie's. Well, see, if that's you, then you have to make a firm de decision to stop grabbing those little Debbies late at night and uh, eat, start eating healthy. But uh, all of these, now don't get me wrong, they're all great le resolutions, but let's be honest. What generally happens to resolutions that we make? The, like, like this list right here, this is how you're going to start your year. Nine times out of ten, I believe that they get broken, that, that we break the resolutions. And, and see, I, I don't think that um, we make a firm decision to break them. It just kind of happens. Like, like if you've put your heart into trying to, to quit smoking, and, and let's say that you haven't smoked for a whole month. You've went a whole month and you've not smoked a cigarette I don't believe that you wake up on, on February the 1st and just make a firm decision. You know what? I'm, I'm just going to be a full-fledged smoker again. No, see, I believe it gradually happens. What will happen is you'll get stressed out over something. Uh, someone will upset you, and, and you get this where you think, you know what? I'll just smoke one. I'll just smoke one cigarette to, to get rid of the stress. What will it hurt if I just smoke one? Um, there's a saying that, uh, that, comes, that they speak a lot in um, Narcotics Anonymous or Alcoholics Anonymous. And the saying is, one is too many and a thousand is never enough. See, you don't make a firm decision to say, I'm just going to start smoking again. 
And, and for sure, you don't spend a, a month getting up early and, and going to the gym and spending your time at the gym and changing all of your eating habits and then all of a sudden say, that's it, I'm done. No, I, I'm not going to go to the gym anymore. But, but what happens? And see, I, I can speak on this because this generally happens to me like about every uh, three months. That alarm goes off. 5.30 in the morning, and, and you think, you know what, I'll, I'll just hit that snooze button. I'll hit that snooze button, and I'll get that extra 10 minutes of sleep. And then well, when it goes off again, you think, well, I, I'm late for the gym. I might as well just skip the whole workout. And then that was going in with your eating healthy, and you think, well, it, it's lunch. And, and, and you don't just make a firm decision to start eating unhealthy again, but it's like, well, I didn't go to the gym today, so, so what's the use to really eat healthy? Just today, you know what, I'll, I'll go to Pals, and, and I'll get me a big pal with cheese and a fry. And then before you know it, you're right back to where you were. were. You're, you're not going to the gym anymore, and, and since you're not going to the gym, it's like, well, why should I even try to eat healthy anymore? And it's like, how in the world did, did I get here? I'll tell you how. This is why we tend to break a lot of our resolutions. Your resolution was not a firm yay. Or your resolution was not a firm yay. It was more like, well, well, this sounds like a good idea. I'll just give it a try. You have to make a firm yay. It has to be a firm nay to, to the list or whatever your resolution is going to be. Now, now, all of these resolutions that, that I mentioned, they were all um, physical resolutions, which, like I said, it, it's okay to have physical resolutions, but, but the problem with um, physical resolutions, or let's call them worldly resolutions, look what 1 John 2.17 says. The world and its desires... Because that's what that list was really, right? Well, it was all desires that we would like to start doing in our life or we would like to keep away from our life. Well, no matter what those physical or worldly desires are, guess what they're going to do? They're going to pass away. But whoever does the will of God, and see this should put like smiles on our faces, whoever does the will of God lives forever. But see, finding the will of God... Well, that's spiritual. And I'm afraid that much like our uh, physical resolutions, lots of times we don't give God that firm yay and the world that firm nay. No, it's back to that whole, this sounds like a good, good idea. Let me give it a try. See, last week, at the end of my lesson, uh, if, if I asked you, I said, well, I want you to uh, study some scripture to be able to teach your family communion. Now, I believe if you stayed with me, if you watched the whole lesson, I would imagine that after it was over, like that seemed like a great idea. You know, I want to listen to what Ben says. I I'm going to teach my family communion. I'm going to study the scripture. But after the lesson ended, see, for lots of you, there was a problem. You were still on Facebook. And you thought, well, let me just scroll for just, you know, two or three minutes. I'll scroll through Facebook for two or three minutes, and then I'll get into the scripture. And see, that two or three minutes, well, well that turned into two or three hours, and then all of a sudden it was bedtime. So we didn't study the scripture, and we didn't teach our family communion. Now, now look, I, I don't believe for one second that any of you watched the lesson last week and said, Ben, you're crazy. There's no way I'm going to teach my family communion. But I do not think also that you turned it off and gave a, gave a firm yes Yay, a firm yay, I will teach my family communion. See, see, when we choose to follow Christ, because that's what it is, it's, it's a choice, it's your free will. 
but it cannot be, okay, let me just try this out. See, it has to be a firm yay. A firm yay that I surrender my life to Him. I want you to look at this list. All right? Here's a list of sins, just something I topped up. It's uh, sexual immorality, adultery, greed, addiction, anger, bitterness, jealousy. See, when I, when I look at this list, I know, I've been taught, the convictions of my heart, I know that every one of these are sin. See, I, I know this will destroy me spiritually. If I am being um, led by, by the Holy Spirit of God, there's no way in my right mind that I would firmly say yay. That I would firmly say yay to any of these. Because I know that how that would affect me spiritually, how that would destroy me spiritually. I would not give a firm yay to any of these. But I believe these happen lots of times to us because at the beginning, whenever we, we gave our life to Christ, we didn't give Him that firm yay. Or, or maybe you did give Christ the firm yay, like I surrendered to Him, but you didn't give a firm yay to these. Like no matter what, I, I'm going to continue in church. A firm yay on yes, I will serve it happens all the time. I, I tell you guys all the time how important it is to, to stay in God's Word. And I think lots of times we'll do that for a, a couple of days, maybe even a week, but it's continuing in it. And, and just like I've been saying, it's not that you say, I'm, I'm never going to read the Bible. It, it's just you didn't give a firm yay at the beginning. And lots, lots of times like our resolutions that get broken, they just tend to fall away. We have to give firm yeas to all of these, continuing in church, serving, staying in God's Word, and spiritual discipline. See, see when these um, sound just like good ideas, when, when these sound like something, well, I think I'll just give that a try, we tend to give up on them. We tend to quit them. And then it leads to this. See, you didn't just give a firm yay to do any of these. It's just you didn't give a firm yay to this. And then what will happen is you'll slide in to this. And, and see, these, it's not like they, they just happen overnight. Listen to what James says. James 1.14, it says, Each person is tempted. Watch this. When they are dragged away. It's not like I'm just going to uh, uh, dive head first into sin. No, I was with Jesus and the enemy is going to try to destroy your life. And he's going to drag you away by what? By your own evil desires. And, and then you'll be enticed. Then after desire has well, it's conceived, see it's all this process. It gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, well, it gives birth to death. And I want you to listen to me. If this message is speaking to you right now, if you're sitting there thinking, Ben, that's exactly where I'm at, and I just can't take it anymore. I know I'm not supposed to be doing these things. Well, stop condemning yourself and do yourself a huge favor. Give a firm yay to God's grace. And, and when you firmly say yay to God's grace, then stop making physical resolutions and start making spiritual resolutions. And you're like, okay, well, well how do I do that? How do I make spiritual resolutions? resolutions. The scripture I chose is, is Colossians 3, and I think Paul hits the, the nail on the head right here. He says, uh, Colossians 3, starting in verse 2, here's some spiritual resolutions. Set your mind on the things above, not on the earthly things. Well, why would I do that? Well, let me tell you why. Because that's where Christ is. 
seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above. Spiritual resolutions. I'm going to start focusing on Christ and not so much on the earthly things. Why are we doing that? Remember what John said. He said earthly things, worldly things, they pass away. See, you're going to find your, your spiritual needs where Christ is. Watch verse 3. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. See, that, that's your old self. You died to sin. When Christ, I think you could preach this verse, have a whole message on this. Like, does this speak to you? When Christ, is it your life? Because that's what it should be. Right? And, and nothing else really matters. Is Christ your life? Listen to what he says in Colossians. When Christ, who is your life, it's almost like Paul's reminding them, hey, hey, remember Christ, the one who died for you, the one who, who conquered death, the one who resurrected, he's your life. So when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So put to death, therefore, Whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Okay, you ready for this? Here's your firm nays. This is our firm nays that we're going to have. We're going to say a firm nay to sexual immorality, a firm nay to impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is, which is idolatry. And because of these things, the wrath of God is coming. And here's what we all know. You used to to walk in these ways. Right? See, see this list beforehand. Uh-oh, I messed up on my clicker. See this list right here? This is what we used to be. But that's not us anymore. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life that you once lived. But now, you must also rid yourself of all such things as these. Once again, firm nays to anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. And have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge in the image of the Creator. So, so, so I want you to, to go look in the mirror and ask yourself this simple question. Did I give Christ a firm yea? Am I a different person than I was before? And if the answer, if you can look in the mirror and give yourself a firm yea that I gave Christ a firm yea, then your life, well, it, it should resemble this right here. As God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, Clothe yourself or give firm yeas to this right here. Give a firm yea to compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. Why don't you give a firm yea to, to bearing with each other and, and a firm yea to, to forgiving one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, just forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all of these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. See, that love, it doesn't just bind them together in unity, but it binds them together in perfect unity. How about this year... Um, we all make a firm resolution to live in perfect unity, watch this, with believers. Believers, the people that believe in Jesus the same way you believe in Jesus, make a firm resolution to live in perfect unity with them. Because, because you ready for this? You're not supposed to live in perfect unity with unbelievers. However, as believers, see what we are claiming is that we know 
God's love. We claim that we have given God a, a firm yay. I surrender my life to you. And we show that love to believers and unbelievers alike. Lord, I thank you for this day that you've given us, God. Thank you for an opportunity to uh, study your word. Thank you for everyone who is able to watch this lesson tonight, God. I pray that you search all of our hearts and all of our minds, Lord. And um, the things in our life, God, that we, we worry and spend too much time on, rid ourselves of them. Help us to get rid of those out of our life, God, and start making more uh, spiritual resolutions instead of physical resolutions. And with those spiritual resolutions, let us firmly say yay to you in all that we do. And let us focus on, on who you are and your love and what your love does. Help us to remain united in Christ. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. <laughs>